everyone. It is an honor and a pleasure for me to have the opportunity to speak again to a CAOCON conference. I bring greetings to all of you from the ISQA community. We are proud to partner with you, and I know that uh, quite a number of you will come to uh, thank you. Uh, quite a, quite a number of you will come to Seoul later this year to share your achievements with the rest of the world. We are really looking forward to that. So, now over to the topic of my presentation. If I should say it in a few words, I would say that leadership is about nurturing a learning health system. Leadership is about nurturing a learning health system. Why is that so? We, we know a lot, but we do not use all what we know well enough. It is becoming increasingly apparent that our current health systems are not built to last. 60% of care is delivered within guidelines based on evidence or expert consensus. 30% is low value or wasteful and 10% results in direct harm to the patient. Imagine that 40% of what we're doing does not provide much value to patients. It even generates harm that must be taken care of. Imagine that we could mobilize perhaps 50% of the resources we spend to really create value. The way to do so is to create a uh, sustainable learning health system, a system where knowledge is not something that accumulates in journal papers, not something that people know in the sense that they can tell you about it, but something that is translated into daily action. This will need change. As we know, any system is perfectly designed to perform in the way it performs now. But implementing change is challenging. Change is often uh, top-down, issuing more policy, introducing more stringent measures, etc. We must move towards a learning health system. Uh, effective change must factor in the system's complexity, and we must recognize the challenges of implementing change in a complex adaptive system. Learning health systems are defined as systems where science, informatics, incentives, and culture are aligned for continuous improvement and innovation with best practices seamlessly embedded in the care process. Patients and families are active participants in all elements and new knowledge captures as an integral byproduct of the care experience. The learning health system has potential to greatly improve the safety, effectiveness, and cost effectiveness of healthcare and could represent a shift in the conduct of research. But healthcare is a highly complex system, perhaps the most complex system that exists. I can't go deep into this now, but there's a reference on the next slide that can serve as a good introduction. But the reason for complexity to emerge is that relations between causes and effects are not linear, but include positive and negative feedback loops and cross-links between different processes. And this means that the effect of a given action can't always be predicted precisely, and that an action at one place may have unforeseen consequences at another place. Embedded in the system are a lot of processes that are simpler, sometimes even linear and easy to understand, but the result of combining a large number of interconnected processes is the emergence of a complex system. And as a response to this unpredictability, uh, it's not always efficient or even possible to work as per the rules in a manual. There may even arise situations where two applicable rules prescribe actions that are conflicting. Therefore, people in the system will react by adapting their actions to the actual situation. They will do so based on their knowledge of how the system works locally where they are. They may not necessarily be able to take more distant effects of the actions into account, which may lead to new adaptations elsewhere in the system. Some of these adaptations may lead to changes in the written or unwritten rules on how to act. In other words, the systems develops and learns. This may lead to an improved system, but sometimes also to drift into failure. 
I just told you that one of the properties of a complex system is that it adapts itself. Why? Doesn't that mean that it's inherently learning, a learning system? It does in some sense, but we can't be sure that it changes in the direction we want to. And to be true, the performance of healthcare system does improve over time. We see a secular trend for improvement that, by the way, can confound before after studies or time series studies if you don't take the appropriate methodological precautions. But the change is too slow. Some people have found that it takes an average of 17 years for only 14% of new discoveries to enter practice. And then consider the rate with, with which uh, knowledge is growing. So even if we do improve the target, full use of all present relevant knowledge is moving and moving fast. So we need to speed up the learning. And in addition, there's, there's always the risk of drifting into failure. Staffordshire was a complex system that adapted and changed itself. No one deliberately wanted it to change into the failed system it, be it became, but nevertheless, that was what happened. And we can point out some of the features that led to this, conflicting goals and, and uh, messages, reluctance to listen to staff, comfort seeking versus a um, problem sensing approach, approach to the use of data and information and the blame culture. But to sum up, laissez-faire is not an option. We cannot just hope that things will take care of themselves. But the uh, opposite of laissez-faire is also not an option. Rules and procedures can reduce complexity and are well used for this purpose, but they can't eliminate it. A complex system can't be managed by a master manual. And as you know well, the kind of knowledge we use when we plan and provide care is certainly far from all of us of the just do this and that uh, way kind. You need to think while you work. So, what you can do as a leader is in a sense to ride the wave. And you need, in, in this, uh, on, on this ride, you need to uh, use the knowledge delivered to us by implementation science. One thing is evidence-based practice, innovation and clini clinical measures, the thing. The other thing is the implementation strategies, the stuff we do to help people and places do the things. And that's, uh, the, the second of these is the important domain of the leader, I believe. Successful implementation can uh, be guided by this, this kind of four-step approach. Uh, we, we could use accreditation standards or other standards to describe the desired change of behavior and the supporting evidence. Uh, they can also clarify the scope for adaptations, what can be changed, what can't. We must define the uh, barriers and facilitators locally, but implementation science can guide us to, uh, in, 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 in this uh, exercise, there are generic types that are well described in the literature. The strategy must again be determined locally, but also here, implementation science can guide us and provide us with a large number of options to choose from. And lastly, uh, we should be remind ourselves that the, of the importance of data-driven approach to quality improvement. We can learn from some successes and, and some failures. The ICUs in Michigan were able to reduce the incidence of central venous line associated infections to zero by using a bundle of interventions. The same bundles were introduced in the UK, but without achieving the same result. This is probably due to differences in the implementation approach. In one case, we had uh, the Michigan case, a successful case, uh, there were uh, isomorphic pressure, the perception that it's, it is unacceptable and damaging not to comply with certain good practice. There was a sense of community. Um, there was a shared sense of purpose and, and motivation. And in the other case, the UK case, it may have been perceived as just another top-down government-led initiative perceived by staff as harsh and coercive and local leaders failed to develop co consensus and coalition. Uh, the power of isomorphic pressure can be illustrated by a story of a quick spread of an improvement. The introduction of pulse oximetry into anesthesia practice that happened during my own time as a practicing anesthesiologist. 
in the more affluent parts of the world, this innovation was adopted rapidly within a few years or less, certainly with, not with a 17 years delay. And the isomorphic pressure, the feeling that this was uh, the right thing to do was an important uh, factor, but it's also worth to notice a number of barriers that were not there. There was no power game, no one would lose power by adopting the new practice. There was no need to unlearn, unlearn old habits. This was a pure add-on. Employing new technology is a sweeter, more appealing change than changing organizational habits and practices, and implementation was relatively affordable in the context. Now back to the uh, learning system. A, de a learning health system can de be defined uh, by um, four key dimensions, science and informatics, patient, cl patient and clinician partnerships, incentives, and a continuous learning culture. And more about them in a moment. A fifth dimension, structure and governance, has been added by a group of researchers from the Australian Institute of Health Innovation, led by Professor Jeffrey Braithwaite, the president of ISQA, and you may now call it the Institute of Medicine, the Rinsky Braithwaite model. And you will see that it is aligned with a quadruple aim, sustainable costs, improves provider satisfaction, patient experience of care, and quality in population care. As you know, we should now add equity uh, uh, to grow the quadruple aim into the quintuple aim, and this model would embrace this as well. Some characteristics of the uh, dimension science and informatics. Uh, focus, um, focus is on making knowledge easily available at the point of care where it, where it is needed and on capturing the care experience to generate more knowledge. Knowledge is not just knowledge in textbook and journals, it's also knowledge about how our own concrete system operates in general and here and now. Some of this knowledge is formalized into standards, uh, policies, and procedures, and other uh, shapes our culture, the values, the way we think about things, and how we do things here. During the last uh, half year or so, it has become very obvious that artificial intelligence will become a major game changer. The older ones among us have experienced one informatics revolution when the internet and mobile devices made all the intervention information we had to retrieve cumbersomely from printed books and journals and in libraries available in our, in our palms, wherever we happen to be. And the next revolution will be just a seeming allowing us to digest and apply the terabytes of information we have access to in a wholly new way. There are obvious risks and hazards, but the potential is, is enormous. Co-production of care with, uh, with uh, building true partnerships with uh, uh, patients and, uh, pa uh, and families and caregivers is a very important com component of being a learning health system. Full uh, transparency is possible, although often initially met with skepticism and resistance, and that should be the norm, and once established, it tends over time to become accepted and eventually uh, viewed as the very natural way of things to be. Incentives are here understood as encouraging people to do certain things. Financial incentives are only one type of incentive. They work, but not always in the way you had hoped for. You need perhaps to be just or perhaps even more aware of financial disincentives, payment model designs that discourage the needed the desired behavior. On this slide, I would like to highlight the need to develop system competencies among staff. It's not enough to have your professional knowledge and professional skills. You must also understand how a system, complex system, works and learn to navigate, navigate safely in it. Policies, governance, and regulations should be aligned to facilitate research, collaboration, and learning. Infrastructure should be in place to support local decision-making, both clinical and organizational decisions. And this would include policies, procedures, decision support systems, and access to relevant information. 
and of course here artificial intelligence will revolutionize the way in which we do things. Goals and means to achieve the goals should be clearly stated, known and accessible, and standards and performance indicators should further inform everyone everywhere. I will quickly move on to my last slide because I can see I have only a few seconds left. And that's to say a few words about how ISQA might facilitate the spread of the idea, ideas of an, uh, a knowledge of the learning health system. Uh, we are a global, system, uh, global organi membership based organization and we will use all the channels available to us to collect and disseminate knowledge and implementation science and learning health systems. Thank you for your attention.